Welcome. I am Sister Who. With me today, I have, let me make sure I pronounce this right, Carried one, um, and you are a chaplain. Yes, I'm a chaplain with the Department of Corrections. Okay. There's a number, so many different things we could talk about today, and I'm sure we'll be doing other episodes as well. But um, to begin with, I guess, um, we, we talked around a bunch of different ideas beforehand. The one that came to my mind the most as I was pondering it over last night uh, was just, you know, to begin at square one. Someone who uh, has wound up in the correctional system and they have a lot of different stresses on their mind. It would seem to me the last thing they want to be dealing with right now uh, is someone trying to convert them to another religion. Um, certainly there are needs for some sort of spiritual guidance, some sort of reassurance, the sort of ministry that a chaplain does. Um, trying to persuade someone that they need to be a Christian at the same time would seem to me to really complicate dealing with the situation. Well, in fact, it is against the rules um, with the Department of Corrections for anyone to proselytize. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean that there aren't people in situations um, who forget that. Um, and so there is some level of, of pressure. For one thing, most of the programming um, is provided by uh, Christian volunteers mm -hmm. um, and if you want to go to the programming there it is they, and I'm they sure don't... we're thankful for the volunteers oh absolutely but and the programming because any you know, programming is better than no programming yeah but there is a certain sensitivity that should come along with it absolutely and um, by law it's supposed to and there are very few cases of blatant proselytizing. It's generally much more subtle. Okay. Um, like, for instance, um, an inmate coming to one of my programs um, might be when, they let, when they're let out of their unit to come. The unit officer might say something like, why are you going to that? That's, that's not... It's placing a value judgment it's on a It's placing particular... a value judgment of any kind. Yeah, um, or, and even mentioning it, even saying anything about it, it's not appropriate. But people are people, and they don't always hmm. act well, and, <laughs> in and the And I best. don't know that too many people consider subtle things like that to be as injurious as they might be. You know, the well, the inmates will come to us and say, Officer so-and-so just said, you know, what are you doing that for? That's like you. And, and so the inmate is feeling judged, mm -hmm. and they've already been judged. <laughs> Um, and now there's more judgment, and How yet... How much judgment does a person have to deal <laughs> exactly. with? Exactly. <laughs> well, there, when we were first taking our, our volunteer training, um, the teacher we had, who was a very good vo uh, volunteer trainer, said one thing you need to remember, and everyone needs to remember, they are here as punishment, not for punishment. As okay? punishment, not for punishment. Their you, sentence, more about that. Their sentence was... A, a span of time. Okay. That is their punishment. Removal from society for X span of time. Okay. Not, I personally want to make your life miserable today. And I think that should be done up in little cross-stitched samplers all over every prison um, in the world because there it is. That, that is their punishment. Doing well, time is their punishment. Yeah. We don't need to add anything we don't, to it. No. Exactly. We should be, and that's why um, staff in the facilities are called corrections officers, not guards. They are here as part of the process of rehabilitation, or for some people, habilitation. Mm -hmm. um, and it is up to staff, and they're trained with this, to be exemplars of normal <laughs> um, normal healthy <laughs> yes <laughs> respectful relationships yes that that we hope that these inmates would would learn from and step up to mm -hmm. so uh, every person on staff is to some extent part of the program mm -hmm. of let's get you in a better place so that when your time is over you perhaps are better equipped well, 
And without digressing for the moment into how well does the system itself work, that's another conversation. Um, you know, and how well trained are the staff? And even if they are well trained, how well do they follow the training they've received? I mean, those are all sorts of other issues. For the moment, I still want to concentrate on the individual in the midst of this situation mm -hmm. who may at some point express a wish to find out about different religions but should not be um, coerced or encouraged to do so, in my opinion, um, because it's, it's secondary to being there and trying to figure out how to be the best, into, how, how to be or become the best individual they can be.